Hello everyone. My new premium React course just launched this morning. And to celebrate, I'm going to be sharing the first chapter here on YouTube. So every day for the next 10 days, I'll post a new lesson. And all together, this forms the first chapter, which is called the 10 days of React. I hope this series helps you learn the incredibly in-demand React library. And without further ado, enjoy day number one. Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to ask ourselves, where do we begin? We're actually going to answer that by answering two other important questions. So number one, what is React? And number two, what problem does React solve? So question number one is really easy to answer. What is React? Well, we can see from the official React website that React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. So that's what React is, and we know that we want to learn React because it's incredibly popular and companies that are hiring developers want us to know it. But why? Why do they want us to know it? Why is React so popular? Well, that brings us to the actual crucial question that we're going to spend this entire video on. And that is, what problem does React solve? This question is so important. Because if you don't know what problem a tool is solving, you're setting yourself up for failure. From the very beginning, you fundamentally will not understand the tool. I've seen this time and time again. If a student doesn't begin by seeing why we use React, they'll usually give up learning it because it seems like too much work for no real payoff. You'll see this a lot with burnt out or frustrated developers. They talk negatively about React but when you hear them try to describe why the industry uses React in the first place, you can tell they have no clue what they're talking about. So, of course, they're not going to understand or enjoy React. And that's not their fault. It's the fault of teachers and learning materials. But this course is designed from the ground up to be different. We take the time to understand why we're doing what we're doing. And this allows people who might have otherwise struggled with React to finally understand it. Hence the name of the course, React for the rest of us. Because you don't need to be a genius to get React. You just need an actual teacher instead of someone reading off microwavable popcorn instructions to you. So in this first video, we are not going to actually touch React at all. Instead, we're going to look at two different ways we can create user interfaces with JavaScript without React or without a library whatsoever, right? Just plain vanilla JavaScript. We're going to look at the pros and cons for both of these coding approaches and then walk through how React fits into this picture and how React gives us the pros of both approaches without the cons of either approach. This will show us the problem that React is solving and seeing that will make learning React 100 times easier. Uh, not only because you'll have a frame of reference and a context for everything, but because by seeing why React is so special, you'll have a motivation and reason to power through the challenge of learning it, right? You'll feel compelled to take advantage of React in your projects. So by the end of this video, we'll have a general idea of why React is useful. And then in our very next video, we can actually get our hands dirty and start using React. At this point, let's jump into the real action of this lesson. So the two coding approaches that we're going to look at are what I would call the DOM-focused approach and the data or declarative view approach. Now, I've actually set up a working code pen example for each one of these approaches. If you'd like to dig through my example code, you can find the links to these code pens and the resources for this lesson, but you do not need to do that. You can just watch me talk about the code in this very video. So in this tab, here's one approach. In this tab, here's the other approach. And the actual application is identical. So you can see down here, I can fill out this form and say, walk the dog and create that item. I can create another item, feed the cat, buy vegetables. And then if I want to delete one, if I want to delete feed the cat, you can just click delete. If I want to update one, I can say buy vegetables and fruits. You get the idea. And then the same thing is true for this coding approach as well. 
right? This is the exact same application. It's just coded in a different fashion. So I can say, feed the cat, walk the dog, buy groceries. So the application itself is the same, but they were created using very different philosophies or approaches. And consequently, they each have their own unique set of pros and cons or strengths and weaknesses. The key point here is that neither approach is ideal. So let's take this first example, what I'm calling the DOM focused approach, and let's break down its problems. By the way, DOM stands for document object model, and that just refers to the web browser's model of the actual content or elements on the page. So with this coding approach, these actual LI or list item elements, these are the source of truth or source of data for our application. So for example, this JavaScript code, let me scroll down a bit. This listens for the form element being submitted, right? When you create a new item and instead of adding that new item to a raw JavaScript array of data, well, this DOM focused approach literally just adds a new LI list item element to this unordered list or UL element. And the same is true for when you click on one of the delete buttons. Instead of removing an item from a raw JavaScript array of data, we are just literally removing that LI element from this UL element. And then because I want to persist our data, even if you reload or refresh the page, right? So even if I click refresh, you can see that our two items are still here. To make that happen, I'm using the web browser's local storage feature. So each time you create a new item or edit or delete an existing item, I'm saving all of our data into local storage. And then when you first load up this page or refresh the page, I'm loading or pulling that data from local storage. Now this need to save and load data begins to really show the problems with this DOM focused approach because we don't want to save the actual HTML for this entire LI or list item element, right? We only want to save the actual text values for each item. So you can see in our JavaScript, I'm performing this weird, awkward dance with the DOM. I'm saying, let's begin with our list, our unordered list, select all of its list items, and then I'm going to loop through each one of them. And I'm going to look for the span element inside of them that has a class of value. And that's going to get me just this actual piece of the element instead of the entire element. And then I need to say, grab the inner HTML, right? The actual text or value for that item. And then that way I actually do have an array of the items and I can save those into local storage. Now, technically this approach works, but it's a nightmare for so many different reasons. Primarily because working with the DOM is relatively slow, even on the fastest computers in the world. Whereas even on older, slow computers, the browser's ability to work with raw JavaScript data is blazing fast. So whenever possible, if we can avoid working with the DOM, we absolutely should avoid working with it. So it sort of goes without saying that it's not ideal for the DOM to be our source of truth or source of data. So that's the first problem with this approach. The second huge problem is that the code that makes up our user interface is fragmented all over the place, right? Some of it's here, some of it's here, some of it's here. And we end up having to babysit tons of different elements manually instead of just having one convenient centrally located place for our interface. Now, yes, this approach does work for very, very simple applications, but as soon as the complexity of your project grows at all, it becomes a nightmare to have to mentally keep track of where you are manually babysitting each element in different locations throughout your code. It's just a recipe for messy spaghetti code and an unnecessarily stressed out life for you as a developer. So that's the first of the two approaches that we're going to look at in this lesson. Now let's change gears and look at the second approach or the data or declarative view approach. And again, remember that neither of these two approaches are using React or any library. They're both just plain vanilla JavaScript. So in this approach, we can see how it gets its name around line number 19 or 20. So I've created this function named render 
And then here in one centralized location in the code, our entire user interface is declared, right? We have the form with the input field. We have the unordered list inside the unordered list. We're looping through our data and we're outputting a LI or list item element for each to do item. And when the user tries to create a new item with this form or when this form is submitted, you can see I'm calling a function named submit handler. So if we go take a look at that function, you can see that this function does not babysit the DOM or directly worry about modifying the DOM in any way. All it does is take a raw JavaScript array of data and push a new item onto that array. Right. And then once we've done that, I'm calling a function named save data, which is going to save it to local storage. But then also the save data function is going to call the render function. And I'm taking the same approach for when someone clicks on the delete button for one of the items, instead of manually babysitting any of the elements, I'm just going to remove that item from our raw array of data and then run the render function again. So the idea is that whenever we modify our apps data, we call that render function. And render has our entire user interface declared in one convenient location. Now at first glance, this approach might seem way better than the first approach, the DOM based approach, right? This data or declarative view approach lets us keep things more organized and we don't have to do any awkward dancing with the DOM because the DOM is not our source of truth. Our raw JavaScript data is the source of truth. However, there is one huge problem with this approach that is even bigger than any of the problems with the first DOM based approach. So yes, it's nice and convenient to have our interface defined in this one centralized place, but that convenience comes at a price because now whenever any data changes in our app, we are re rendering the entire application. And remember that working with the DOM and telling the DOM to re render or repaint content is very slow. So even if we really only need to update the text for one item or just delete one of these items, our entire application, including the form and potentially hundreds of items, they're all going to get re rendered. And that is a performance and speed nightmare. And it's going to result in an application that feels slow, unresponsive and just weird for the end user. Now, if we contrast this with our first approach, the DOM focused approach, in this case, when we added a new element, we only rendered that one specific new element. Or when we deleted an element, we actually just removed that one LI list item from the page, right? We only manipulated the one tiny piece of the DOM that actually needed to be manipulated because it was now different. That is what we want to do. That's what creates fast and responsive feeling front end applications. However, that's really the only area where this DOM focused approach excelled. Everything else about this approach feels messy and unorganized. So at this point we're conflicted because aside from that one huge performance issue with the second approach, it seems like the second approach is the clear winner. So the question becomes, is there any way that we can get the best of both worlds of these two approaches? Is there any way that we can have our cake and eat it too? Well, yes, we can. And this is exactly where react comes into play. React is closer to the second or the data declarative view approach. So with react, imagine if we could declare our interface in one centralized place. And then whenever the data for our app changed, instead of the entire interface getting re rendered somehow magically only the exact tiny pieces of the DOM that actually need to display new or changed content, only those little pieces actually get manipulated in the DOM. Well, that's react in a nutshell. Now, yes, react is not the only library that does this. There are many libraries that offer us this same approach like angular and Vue.js. But in my opinion, react is the most beautifully simple solution. I mean, it's even in the very name of the library react. We can just worry about our apps data and our user interface will automatically react to that data. So big picture, that's the problem that react solves. It lets us keep our data outside of the DOM so that working with the data is simple and blazingly fast. And as our data changes, it 
reacts by re-rendering only the exact tiny pieces of the DOM that actually need to be re-rendered because they are now different. Trust me, it might not seem like much, but this is an incredibly powerful approach. And yes, it will take some time and practice, but throughout this course, we are going to wrap our minds around this React way of doing things. And it's going to completely change the way we build interfaces for the better. So now that we have a frame of reference for why we should use React, other than just because it's popular, we are in a great position to move forward. And in our very next lesson, we are going to get our hands dirty and actually start using React together step by step. Let's keep things rolling. I'm so excited to get started with you and I'll see you in the next lesson. To get immediate and lifetime access to the full 15 hour video course, you can find a heavily discounted coupon link in the description for this video. Thank you so much for watching and take care.